So let's talk about servers, specifically this Dell R720 XD. There are a lot of companies that live on the bleeding edge, which means they change out their servers rather quickly and before they're technically, you know, end of life, but that's obviously a matter of opinion. If you need the fastest, best servers all the time, you're willing to swap them out even on a yearly basis. And I've seen this in the financial markets, especially where every tiny millisecond can make a lot of money for them. Therefore, swapping out servers becomes worth it because they need the absolute bleeding edge all the time. That opens up the secondary market to a lot of great deals on used servers. And the folks at Tech Supply Direct, someone we've done some business with, decided, hey, they'd like to sponsor our channel, so they made an offer code. And so by using the offer code, you can Get 10% off your purchase with Tech Supply Direct. Helps the channel out, helps you out by getting you a 10% discount. And they have a lot of options on servers. Specifically, one we're gonna talk about today is this Dell R720. And I'm making this video also because I'm going to do a series of videos, both on FreeNAS and XCP and G using this particular server. So whenever someone asks, what server did you do this on? I will just be linking back to this video. So let's go over the details, specs of the server, and a couple other things. But first, can you hit the like button? Because in our algorithm-driven world, that helps the YouTube algorithm know that other people should watch this video and that you enjoyed it. And it's a good indicator for the system that drives us anyways. Let's take a look and talk about the specs and dig into the details of this hardware. So I already have the lid off, but let's remove the airflow plenum here and get that out of the way to expose the details of this particular server. Now, this server actually will support up to 768 gigs of RAM, so we don't even have it all filled up, uh, but it is currently has 64 gigs of ECC memory, which I know will make some people happy because I'm gonna do some free NAS videos on it and a big ECC uh, argument. It's moot point on this because, well, these servers pretty much all come with ECC. We have the Intel E5-2670 at 2.6 gigahertz. We have two of these. Then we have the Dell Perk H310 Mini. Now, if you're not familiar with these, the H310 Mini is part of the RAID expansion because this supports currently in its configuration. It's a 12 drive setup on this system. Uh, so this will support all 12 drives, but you can also get this server configured in a, I believe it's a 24 drive, two and a half inch versus the 12, three and a half inch drives, which is what we have right now. But this is in IT mode, and we'll cover that in a second, but that is IT mode for passing through the drives to the operating system. You can swap these modules out, or when you order it, you can get a different mode, such as this module here. So this is actually a specific RAID controller for hardware RAID. And I'm gonna do separate videos on some of that, but essentially, if you want to have the Dell system, or this card here, control the RAID, you would go with something else. If you want the operating system, which is what we wanted for this particular series of videos I'm gonna do first, you want the H310 in IT mode because that means pass all the drives through the operating system versus a RAID controller takes all the drives, groups them together in whichever configuration you want and passes them through as a single hard drive or you can build multiple RAID arrays and each RAID array you build passes through as a single hard drive. So you're basically removing it from the operating system's responsibility for RAID. That's the difference between IT mode and getting an actual RAID card inside of here. The other advantage some of these RAID cards have is they do have things like extra memory chips. Actually, I think it's on this side. Let me move the battery off. Yep some memory chips on different controllers. And I'll, I'll do a separate video where I cover some of these in more depth, like I said. But basically this has memory on it, has all the RAID settings on it, which is what this hanging off here is the battery to hold the RAID settings on there, and you're using hardware RAID. You do not want this if you plan to use things like FreeNAS and ZFS. You want FreeNAS to have direct control, therefore we're gonna leave in the H310 in IT mode. And we'll, like I said, we'll cover the settings uh, when we get to the hardware software details of this server. But that's obviously just something important to think about when you're ordering it or if you're uh, ever buying one of these, making sure you have the right mode settings on there. And then the backplane connector doesn't change. It's actually kind of cool because you just swap out this little card pops out and you pop the other one in and that will change the functionality of the system. The fans are modular, which is really cool. And now this goes back to why would I ever want to buy a used server that doesn't have some dust in the fans and things like that? Well, Tech Supply Direct cleans it up really nice for you, but this is the other advantage of a server that there's a plenty of in the market. Buy a spare one of these, not when it goes bad, before it goes bad. Fans do occasionally go bad. It's rare, but not completely unheard of. 
And uh, depending, I should say, depending on the dust uh, levels in your environment. Generally, I don't see that many fans going bad in servers, but it's really handy because you can find these cheap even on eBay and keep a spare and set it on top of the server, make sure it's a working spare. And that way, if you ever have a fan alert, you don't have to wait a couple days for shipping. Other things inside of here is you notice we have some SATA modules over here and we have a couple spots to put SATA drives right here. I don't have any in here in this particular config. You can get a little pigtail to power the SATA drives, but you can put a pair of SSDs back here if you want. To and I say a pair of them because maybe you want to set things up in RAID mode. And that's a pretty cool option to be able to have these drives inside as your boot device and then all the drives in front that are under here for the rest of the system for your you know, running all your data. But instead, what we've done is it does have an internal USB. And yes, that's just a SAN disk. And if you're wondering what the thing is on the back, I'll slide it out real quick. Uh, we write XCPNG because that's what we loaded on this and you load it and we use this as the main drive So we put in another USB to load this loaded XCPNG and we leave it inside here Yes, I know it's not redundant. It's a single uh, one But for demo purposes and for all the lab videos we're gonna do that's great If you wanted something a little better you would get the modules and pop in a couple SSDs back here uh, And obviously that would be your nice way to do this by the way and I say back here the SSDs actually slide out this way and back in. So if you got this with the SSDs and put them in the back, they come out of the back of the server and kind of rack in like that. And then you would have the connectors right here with the whole uh, system for that. But other than that, uh, inside is pretty nice. If you didn't know, things that are orange, generally in Dell, that's been their color scheme for a while, can actually be removed without powering off or restarting the server. Uh, things that are blue, you want to have the server off to remove, which is, means we can actually leave this all hooked up and set up and if we have to change a fan out pop the lid off without having any downtime pop that new fan in but if you ever wanted to break the system apart more there are levers right here that you can pull this entire array out if you want it will slide all of this up and out but that's pretty cool now the other module part about this is back here we happen to have one two three four network cards in this so four network spots and Let's cover and show what those look like at the back of the server over here. So on the back of the server, we have two spots for SFP plus and then two RJ45 standard one gig connectors. And here's another view of how those back modules will come in and out. So that means I can plug in a 10 gig right here. And then my standard RJ45s are gonna go here for standard one gig connectivity. So this could go to a storage controller or just a 10 gig switch if we had it, uh, that supports SFP, or we can use our standard RJ45s. Now all the way over here on the other side is our iDRAC connector. And what the iDRAC is, is kind of a lights out management system specific to Dell. And when we go to the uh, other side of the, so we start looking at how the iDRAC works and how you interact with the system, uh, you get a better idea how that functions, but it's actually really nice. Then we have these dual 750 watt power supplies that are modular and redundant and can be pulled out, notice the orange tabs, while the system is live. So if you have a power supply failure, the system can notify you and then you can swap out a power supply. This is also something when we put these in for clients, uh, we go ahead and buy an extra power supply and leave it you know, within their IT room. So extra fan, extra power supply, that way if one goes bad, I don't have to listen to it complain about a bad power supply, you have one on hand just to swap it out. So let's take a look at the front of the system here and we'll just pop a drive out randomly, slide it out. Like you said, this has a 12, three and a half inch base on there. Uh, SAS connectors are on these. These are, what do we have? Some three terabyte drives, I think. Yeah, we have a handful of three terabyte drives in here that are gonna be for storage and doing some of our uh, pass through. And me watching through the reflection in the camera <laughs> can still slide these in and out. They're pretty simple. If you want to adapt these, and we stuck a couple SSDs in for some of the demos we're gonna be doing. Uh, we just stuck in one of these little plastic adapters. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. So we can pop an SSD in here and slide it right in. Now the system does have in the back here, and I didn't, I mean, didn't cover them in detail, but it does have a few uh, PCIe slots. So if you wanna put some other devices in uh, with the power adapter, you do need the pigtail power adapter for it as well. That, that is right here in the back. So you can pop a couple different cards in. Now, the next question people ask is, how loud is this thing? Not quiet, we're gonna, that's why we're gonna be finishing in the other room. But while it's sitting here, I'm gonna plug it in so you can hear just how loud this is. So when you first plug it in, there is a little bit of a hum. 
Basically right now the iDRAC system is booting up because like I said, there is a lights out, so to speak management. So you can manage this with only making this much noise because it hasn't really powered up the motherboard and it's booting up the iDRAC system so I can then take control of it, which that's where we're gonna go to next. But let's go ahead and turn it on and hear the full noise of this thing. Now, it takes a second before it idles down and once the system idles down uh, and it's not doing as much, it'll quiet down. So they are variable speed on here. Uh, as far as I know, that is the out of the box default setting, setting as we got them. I haven't really adjusted them. There are some adjustments for like how much you wanna rev up the fans, but generally I want them revving up if the server's under heavy load. But it's not unreasonably loud, but it is probably a little louder than maybe you want sitting next to you while you're doing a video. Uh, but it's not a super annoying sound to me, But it's still not gonna be whisper quiet. Uh, that's, that's just not these systems here. All right, so let's go and uh, dive into it and look at the iDirect system now. All right, we have the server booted up and ready to go here. So let's go ahead and log in as root. And the default password, if you didn't know for most iDracks, or at least all the ones I've seen, has always been Kelvin. You do wanna make sure you change that. It'll prompt you to do so. I've already changed that password from the default. C-A-L-V-I-N, for those of you wondering. And we are now into the iDRAC system. Now the iDRAC system is a separate integrated Dell remote access controller. This is the version seven enterprise version that is the system to monitor the system. This is like that lights out management. And on the summary page here, you can go ahead and we'll do this first. We'll launch and see that systems booted up. And this is actually showing what the system's displaying. So I have full control as if I'm sitting at the console on this and we can reboot, shut down the server, power it off. And all those functions from here, we can also inside of here, we can go to power on and off and actually forcibly power the server on and off. Because the Dell iDirect system is a separate controller, if you have problems with the server, even with the hardware, the iDirect is able to, without the server being, so to speak, booted up or running, able to do things like turn the server on and off and show you what's on the console and even get into the BIOS and change settings on here. It's really nice because you don't really need to plug a monitor or anything into this to set these servers up. Just figure out what the iDRAC IP address is. For me, I set everything to DHCP and then statically map based on the MAC address. So I know it gets the same IP. And usually you wanna set up a separate management network for all your iDRAC controllers. And when you build out a whole rack with these, you'll build out a whole lights out, so to speak, side of the controller um, of the, your network. So all the controllers are plugged in there and you can physically get into each server even when you're not physically next to that server. Good when you wanna figure out what's going on and if the part goes bad. Let's go ahead and shut this down. So let's uh, actually, we're going to reboot it. Yes. And go ahead and restart XCPNG. Now, um, what I want to do is show you the IT mode because we have all the drives passed through to the operating system with the H310 controller. And that's what we're going to be showing here is exactly how that gets configured. And it's pretty simple. So right now the server is whirring up its fans and making all of its noise, but it's in the other room, so it's not bothering me at all or affecting the video. And we'll wait a second here to get to the screen. Now here's where we can go into the system setup uh, or the BIOS boot manager, but we actually want to get into the RAID config with the control R. And it says no configuration present because there's not one. We've passed all, we've created no disk groups, no virtual disks, we've done all physical disks. And we need to go hit control N here. But if I hit control N, it spawns a new window in Chrome. So we'll just do it with the virtual keyboard here. And this is where you would set each drive. And this is where you can mix and match. So we're gonna go to F2 for operations, convert to RAID compatible. What I did was convert it to non-RAID. That's why it says that here. So each drive can be converted either way. So here's the four SSDs we have that are S standard SATA, and it shows you the connector type is SATA versus SAS. These are the Toshiba SAS drives that are in here. Uh, and once again, we can convert each one of these to RAID or non-RAID. Also, you may notice with the SAS ones, I can force LED blinking so I can figure out which drive is in which bay, but with the SATA ones, that's not an option on there. So that's all I had to do to get this switched over. Not a big deal with the H310. I don't believe this option is available on some of the other ones like the 7 series controller, I believe does not allow pass through, uh, which is why you want to use the H310 with IT mode. And 
we're using currently the BIOS uh, and it's version 3.0 on this particular controller. All right, we're going to go ahead and escape out of here and let it boot up. Press Control Alt Delete to reboot. So easy enough. Go here to Console Controls. Just hit Apply. It'll force a reboot. And it's going to go through its regular boot up process. While we're doing that, you can see real quick while that's running through, here is the general, the way it looks. And the way we launched a console is HTML5. In case you're familiar with the older versions, then you cringe because it's like that old Java that I really hated where you had to use some weird Java thing. And yeah, it was always a pain before to set these up. This is at least more modern in the R720. Uh, this is the Access Controller 7, and it uses HTML5 uh, for the virtual console. But because this is a full management system, it does have the option to set up alerts, give you a lot of information about the hardware, but those alerts can even be from email, as in if a hardware, major hardware failure happens with your system, you can have this because it's on a separate controller unrelated to the operating system, it will go through and alert you that something has happened to the server. That's part of the lights out management, and that's why it runs independent of the actual operating system. The iDirect system is an operating system into itself. But it gives you all the details, all the hardware uh, statuses of everything, power status, CPU, memory. So you can look up not just what's in the machine, but uh, the health of those things, if there's any type of problems with it, if there's some type of uh, issues going on. But all those little details are completely available through the iDRAC, which is really nice. You can also take a look at the physical disks in the iDRAC. So it'll give you all the detailed information about each physical disk. If you have built this using the virtual disk, as in you've built this with the park controller in RAID mode, then it will give you the status of the RAID controller because then the operating system is blind to what's going on with the RAID controller and you can see it directly from inside of here. So you can control replacing drives and everything else, uh, manage, create, build, unbuild. The only thing I don't think was possible in here, um, double check, I think you have to go into that BIOS option to set these in non-raid mode their status is non-raid mode here okay it does have convert to raid but i don't think it let me unconvert them uh that's why i had to go into bios to do that i can't remember and because i've already got these discs set up um already in the system i didn't want to i don't want to retry that but it does show the if you have more than one controller even you'll be able to go on here and do that also if you're using it in raid mode and letting this handle the raid the park controller handle the raid uh, you can configure hot spares, for example. And what that'll allow you to do is uh, have a spare on the ready to drop in if there's a raid failure, kind of making the ease of management there for you. So if you wanted to let that, if you wanted to let the whole system handle it all for you, that absolutely is possible. And in some circumstances, you may want this system to do it because you don't want to deal with configuring the raid in XCPNG or whatever other operating system you may be putting on there. You can have it just create one big raid array, load the operating system to it. Operating system sees one hard drive, treats it as a single hard drive, but it's actually a group of hard drives being managed by the PERC controller, which, you know, that can be advantageous. Power monitoring. This is a cool feature because you can check the health. You can see exactly how many watts it's using, what percentage of capacity that is. It will even track it over time. So because we rebooted it, we shut it down for a second. So here is our low power, which is no watts. Here's our spinning up all the fans at about 270 watts. And then we're idling currently with the dual power supplies at 196 watts. This thing will also track over time how many kilowatt hours that it may be using. That is a really good thing if you're going just how much does this cost well you look up here uh what you pay per watt what you pay per kilowatt hour from your electrical company and from there you can then calculate out exactly how much this will cost to operate so that's obviously a question that a lot of people have is if i build this home lab just how much power does this need so sitting here idling like i said about 196 watts but that's going to go up and ramp up as you add load to the system or as you add more things for it to do and it scales so the wattage will go up and it will peak out it has a warning once it hits about uh, 900 watts with a uh, failure threshold being at 980 watts and like i said they do sell that bigger power supply if you wanted to go more than 750. Uh, but that's pretty much it for a good overview of this server like i said it's a great server i'll be doing a lot of videos on it um, for both xcpg and freenas and when people ask what server i'm going to use i'm going to talk about this one from Tech Supply Direct. They were gracious enough to supply this, and they do have that offer code uh, so you can get your 10% off.
And if you're interested in purchasing this Dell 12G Power Edge R720 XD with the 12 bay like we have configured here, I basically ran through the same configuration. So it's about two grand for this system. That would be with the 2X Intel Xeon 2670, 64 gig RAM, the H310, uh, no extra backplane, and 12 three terabyte SAS drives. That's actually uh, nice. They have all the costs broken down here. And if you chose to do just SATA drives, which is an option, they actually shipped to me with 12 SAS drives in it. I put in a couple SSDs or swapping back and forth for uh, doing some testing. But you can see that it's actually almost a thousand of the price. So if you were to buy the hard drive separate, yes, you can get this with no hard drives in it. Choose that as an option and knock a thousand dollars off and just get the chassis and start sticking your own drives in there. Or maybe you have your own drives to put in. Uh, but that's it. Go ahead and use our offer code to get 10% off your order and uh, fill it all out. Oh, iDrive Enterprise versus the iDrive Express. Those are both options. The iDrive Enterprise does cost a little bit more, but they have that on the spec sheet here on Dell's website. You can read about the differences between the Express connector versus the Enterprise connector. I will leave that because that question does come up about, hey, my iDirect doesn't look like yours. So I want to, I'll make sure I leave that link here in the description. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.